Hello and welcome to The Pulse. Friday saw the close of China's annual two sessions, the back-to-back -back meetings of the National People's Congress and the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference. Some 3,000 delegates had travelled to Beijing for the meetings which opened on March 3rd against the backdrop of a trade war with the United States, a slowing economy and increasing international suspicions concerning Chinese technology companies, especially Huawei. But although this was barely discussed at these meetings, the international community is ramping up concern over China's increasing crackdown on religious expression on its Muslim communities. Nevertheless, at the beginning of March, the Organization of Islamic Corporation meeting in Abu Dhabi adopted a resolution on safeguarding the rights of Muslim communities and minorities and commended China for its treatment of Muslims. The resolution attracted immediate criticism and accusations of kowtowing to economic pressures. Despite initial denials from China, the United Nations says one million Uyghurs have been detained in political re-education camps. And Human Rights Watch reports that surveillance and repression in Xinjiang has increased dramatically over the past two years. Two weeks ago, producer Ivan Tong visited China and Kazakhstan to talk to members of Islamic communities there. Xinjiang 会越来越少。如果有一天社会不需要的话，可以教育培训中心逐步就可以消失了。Northwest China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region is home to 12 million Muslims. Most are Uyghurs, but there are also Kazakhs and other minorities. Xinjiang is now one of China's most heavily policed areas. The United Nations believes more than 1 million Uyghurs and other Muslims almost 10% of the region's population are detained in political re-education facilities there. Through examining satellite imagery, Canadian researcher Sean Jiang has identified what he believes to be a network of re-education camps in or near various cities. Most were built at least four years ago.
the independent online magazine Bitter Winter has shared with the POWs footage taken inside one of these camps. Dormitories are divided into cells and guarded by iron doors. There are 360-degree surveillance cameras in every corner of the building. The PRC initially denied such camps even existed. But as international awareness grew, it had little choice but to acknowledge their existence. Once it had done so, the state broadcaster CCTV last year broadcast its own video of one of the camps, according to which students are simply here to learn Putonghua and vocational skills. But if I keep studying hard, I can make a living. I like to dance and sing, but the influence of my religious community is very strong. I like to dance, but I don't like to sing. I like to sing, but I don't like to sing. Crackdown on Muslims in Xinjiang province has spread to nearby regions, including here in Qinghai province. The Qinghai Islamic Association is one of the eight Islamic associations in mainland China that has openly agreed to Beijing's sinicization of Islam. Qinghai province, southeast of Xinjiang, is home to a million Muslims and has more than a thousand mosques. We travel to Qinghai's capital, Xilin, to visit the Dongguan Mosque. More than 600 years old, it's the biggest in the province and one of the largest in all of northwest China. As the province's leading Islamic education center, this mosque will soon be required to work even harder to promote China's laws and the core values of Chinese socialism. In January, the China Islamic Association passed a five-year plan to introduce measures to sinicize the religion and guide Islam to be compatible with socialism. Then 宗教信仰政策是全国都是都是穆斯林的一律平等的我们是最幸福的世界上最幸福的穆斯林原因是我们有一个这样伟大的祖国而且我们的这个民族政策都是特别好 
адамдарды ұстап, өте қатан режимде ұстап жатыр. Мысалы, әкесін, шешесін, мұна құлжада алып кіріп кеткен лагерлерді, олардың балыларын далада қалғаннан кейін Қытай өкіметі жинап, өздері таярлаған балыларды Қытайша сөйлететін, оқытатын жерлегі алып кетеді. Осы себептен Бейжім, мұның жүріңпін өкіметі, бір ғұрпа әнді коммунист лидерді. Уйғыр, қазақ, қырғыз, осы мұсылмандарды тез қытайландыруды үлгірі сүріп жатыр. Олар біледі, бүгін бұны істейді алмаса, кейін мүмкін емес. Сол үшін бүгін ең маңызды мәселе біз үшін бұл осы біркен ұлттар ұйымы, біркен Европа, Америка, осылар Қытайға күшті экономиски санкциялар жасайтын болса, ол бірден шегінеді, жабады ол әкіл жатты. Let's take a short break. We'll be back to look at pressures on the Muslim communities in one of China's neighboring countries, as well as in provinces beyond Xinjiang. See you then. There are signs that other regions in mainland China plan to follow the example of Xinjiang and tighten their grip on the Islamic faithful. We travel from Qinghai to the region with the second largest Muslim population, Lingxia Hui Autonomous Region. About 6.8 million Hui Muslims, more than a third of its population, live here. Ningxia authorities recently signed a cooperation agreement with Xinjiang to learn from its policies and strategies for combating ethnic and religious terrorism. We wondered if there would be any visible signs of attempts to reduce the influence of Islam in Ningxia's capital, Inchuan. It didn't take long to find some. Inchuan's halal wholesale food market opened two years ago. If you look at the market's name on the exterior of the building, the word hala is missing. Now it just reads wholesale food market. Most retailers still operating inside the market sell beef or lamb. But on the Wednesday morning we visited, there were few customers. Here in Inchuan Lingxia, the biggest hala wholesale food market, most of the shops are either closed or out of business. The Chinese authorities have erased the words halal food in Arabic outside the shops and replaced them with a Chinese and English logo. The shop owners I talked to told me they are not allowed to talk about it. Chin 也要适应了。This is Lingxia Niujie, Inchuan's best known street for buying and eating halal food. The name of the street in Arabic has also been erased from its gates. As happened with the Hala wholesale food market, Arabic labels or logos have been removed from outside most restaurants. Next to Lingxia Niujie is the Langguan Mosque, one of the largest in the province. We were there at one of the daily prayer times. Usually at this time, the Muezzin's call to prayer would ring out repeatedly across the city. 
Today, though, the call for religious observance that once echoed across the neighborhood can only be broadcast once and at a lower volume, ostensibly to reduce noise pollution. Since last May, all mosques in mainland China have been ordered to display the country's flag at the entrance. We visited one of the largest wholesale book markets in the city to see if copies of the Quran were available in the bookshops. I was forced and I have to say, Mrs. Ayman Umar, I will give up you and uh, I don't like to cooperate with you and I will accept it's a governmental lawyer for my case and it is against my wish. She said if I uh, recognize my crime and she will close the case and give me freedom. Three weeks ago, we visited Atajir's office in Almaty. On the morning of our visit, Sherik Sham Bulash was hosting a regular meeting with relatives of ethnic Cossacks who had been detained in the re-education camps of Xinjiang, which shares a border with Kazakhstan. Among those at the meeting that day was 43-year-old Kazakhstan-born Uyghur Weishan Manapova. Her Chinese husband, Kari Aishan Shan, has been detained in a re-education camp for more than a year and a half. Knowing that we would visit Adiger that morning, she and her children had traveled more than 15 hours from their home just to meet us. Finances 
senari mena köz aldımdan ketmeydi. Yatsam da otursam da dur. Tek gene olsun oylayım da. Ben başka caman oyunu oylamayım. Ben seneye mi kaytıp geledi inşallah.如果你有什么理由给全世界证明他们有什么证据有什么理由这个控制这个哈萨克人让他们不见他们的妻子不见他们的孩子长达两年三年没有理由啊所以这些人只能是站出来了他们不是要抵抗中共啊因为他们已经